Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, January 18th, and then we'll see how things look for Friday, January 19th. We had a pretty nice little bounce. We saw the mega caps and the semiconductors and growth stocks actually do pretty well, which is improving the picture that we're seeing right now technically. There are still things that we need to be worried about. That's always the case. We have some extreme positive readings, a couple of extreme negative readings. And even though the Dow has set recent all-time highs, the NASDAQ 100 just set another new all-time high. That has not been confirmed yet by the S&P 500. If we do finally go up from here with the S&P or at some point in the near future and set that new all-time high, that will end up confirming things. So let's go back and talk about what happened. We did have a gap higher open and prices went above R1. The futures were quite positive and we kind of carried that over into the open. R1 was at 47.51. We got above R2 at 47.62. And then we fell back almost down to the unchanged level. That's that built-in support level on an up day. We didn't quite get to that point before we saw a really nice reversal. Prices then climbed back above R1 and R2, but we didn't get all the way up to R3. And we closed almost at the high for the session. So we saw early weakness and late day strength. And that is suggesting that the smart money is coming in later and starting to do some buying. The fact that we closed almost at the high is also more positive. So after Wednesday, we were shifting a bit more. We were still positive with a negative slant. After Thursday, we're positive and now shifting back more to a positive slant, but things are still a little bit muddy right now. We were up 0.88% on above average volume. We are pretty much positive now with the technicals, but there's always things to be concerned about. Interest rates were up in Thursday's session, but that didn't seem to concern the market. The dollar was also up. And we are keeping an eye on the geopolitical events, but those don't seem to be having a real impact on what's happening in the market, at least right now. Small caps did show some improvement. Now, just one little bounce up is not going to change everything. But, hey, again, I got to take what you can get right now after the really solid up move we saw in December and most of January giving a lot of those gains back. The fact that small caps were even up is something positive. And as I said before, the mega caps and growth did outperform with the NASDAQ 100 setting a new all-time high. On a short-term basis, we do have the Williams percent R and the stochastics, which are looking extreme positive. Intermediate term, we have the PMO and our oscillators, as well as the other oscillators that we're following, following because they're, they're coming down. They're below their moving averages, but some of them are still extreme positive. The NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index is still extreme positive, where the S&P 500 bullish percent index is not. And then the 10-day high low study that we do with the S&P 500, that's still extreme. And then we have a couple of oversold indications. The McClellan oscillator for the S&P, it went extreme negative after Wednesday. It did bounce up after Thursday, but we're still extreme. And then the PMO study. So we have different indications in the same studies of being extreme positive and negative at the same time. On the long-term basis, we have our 150 and 200 period moving averages. They're still extreme positive. And we're still going through this basic scenario. It's likely that the Fed is done raising rates. That's what the market is anticipating. And if we see weaker than expected economic reports, they may cut rates. Well, the reports have been, that have been coming out They've been either in line or stronger than expected. And so that's pushing the doubt in there that may, they may cut rates as early as March. The market had been figuring on about six rate cuts. The Fed is kind of figuring on three rate cuts. Yesterday, we heard some talk out of the EU saying that it would be summer before we see any rate cuts. And this is part of the game that goes on. It's this back and forth, depending on how things are going, what people say. But we also want to keep an eye on the economic reports because if they come in stronger than expected continually, then the Fed is not necessarily afraid to go back in and actually raise rates. The dollar was up and interest rates were up, and that usually puts some pressure on stocks, but it didn't do that on Thursday. We're above the 4.02 level where we closed with the 10-year at 4.14%. According to the RENMAC research that I show over in the weekend videos, 
when we get above that 4.02% level, that's when it starts biting into corporate profits. We still have the 10 to the two and the 10 to the three month yield curves, which remain inverted. Sentiment did go back up. We're positive at 66 where we had been at 57. And this also has now switched back to looking more positive with our ADX. We have the green line, both with the short term and intermediate term going back above the red line. So that's positive. But they're weakening trends. Both are below their moving averages. But we are still trending because both are still above 20. With the update, our bias is positive. And the last two, three, four, five days taken together, I'm keeping our momentum at mixed for right now. Economic reports that came out. And this was stronger than expected. And this is what the Fed is watching to say, well, maybe we're not going to cut rates after all, at least as fast as the market would like us to. Because the weekly jobless claims came in at 187,000, less than the 206,000 they had expected. Last week, we saw 203,000. Continuing claims are also declining at 1.806 million. Last time, or last week, they were in at 1.832 million. Housing starts, now this is showing a little bit of strength because they came in greater than expected at 1.46 million. They had expected 1.417 million. And that's looking out into the future and that could help the housing market where last time we saw 1.525 million. Then the building permits also greater than expected and up a little bit from last time at 1.495 million. They had expected 1.478 million. Last time we had 1.467 million. The Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index, it fell. It was weaker than expected at a minus 10.6. Last time it was at minus eight, or excuse me, they expected it to come in at minus eight. Last time it was at a minus 12.8. Here are some charts showing the blue line are the housing starts, which are continuing to go back up, and that could help things. And we're turning back up slightly with the building permits. And this is a three-month average of that. And also seeing a little bit of a decline from the previous reading when we look at housing starts, but they're still positive. And then the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index, it's negative, but showing some improvement from the previous reading. And this is where we're seeing a drop-off now with the weekly jobless claims they really fell. And what we keep an eye on is the four-week simple moving average, which is the blue line, and that is continuing to fall. The continuing claims are also continuing to fall with the four-week moving average also going down. So we put all of this together. It's a little bit hard to read. The red line are the initial claims. The blue line are the continuing claims. And the unemployment rate is the black line. And then there were a few charts here that are kind of interesting. Now, this is the forward-looking PE ratio. And I discussed this in the intermarket analysis video over the weekend, where we have that static scale, 10 and below is considered inexpensive, between 11 and 19 is fairly priced, 20 and above, that's when the market's considered to be expensive. And when we look forward, we have both the S&P and the equal weight, the, the S&P is the gray one, and that's starting to get a little bit high here, up around that 20 level. And that's kind of been confirming what we've been seeing in the charts that I show. And we're a little bit lower than that, but starting to come back up with the equal weight. So that's just kind of showing that the big mega caps, they're getting overvalued, where when we look at all of the stocks that make up the S&P and treat them the same, we're still in that fairly priced territory. And then we had looking at retail sales where it's continuing to go sideways. And that's often what we see. This is a kind of a warning sign, even though it's holding up, it's not going down. But when we flatten out the way we are and you look at these gray areas, this is when we ended up going into a recession. So this points more to the, maybe we will go into a recession type of category, but there's just as much evidence that we look at that suggests we're not gonna go into a recession. Here's our intraday chart where we gapped above R1. We got up to R2, fell back almost to the unchanged level. And then this is when we saw some real strength coming in. Got back above R1, R2, didn't quite make it up to R3, and closed pretty much off of the intraday high, but at the closing high for that particular bar. Here's what the intraday look, chart looks like for the S&P, where we did see a real improvement in the pre-market session, chopped around after the open, went down and then saw later day strength and we're up slightly in the initial overnight session. 
This is also encouraging. We're seeing the blue line above the red line. That means growth is outperforming value. That's what we want to see in a more solid environment. This is also showing some improvement with the S&P growth to value ratio. We were above the unchanged level and saw a fairly solid move for the day. The end of day charts, we were up with growth quite a bit more than we were up with value for the large caps. The mid caps outperformed with growth and the small caps. So this was more solid. This is more internal what we're seeing that if the market's going to turn back more positive, we want to see a continuation of this. And so I wanted to show you the small cap growth to value ratio where we're getting up to the top end of this range. We've been going sideways and we're starting to turn more positive here, but we need this to go up if we're going to see the small cap index start to go back up. The mid caps have been holding up a lot better and actually breaking out and are in a more solid uptrend. So that's also positive for now. And we're seeing some improvement here with the S&P growth to value ratio with the end of day chart. We want to see this continue to go up if that's going to give more support to the S&P. And looking at this growth to value ratio, we are coming up and getting near this breakout point, And that is also showing some improvement. But we're still a little concerned here about discretionary when we compare it to staples. We were up with discretionary. We were down with staples. We turned up with this ratio, but we want to see more follow through with this than what we've been seeing right now. Looking at our trend where we crossed over the red line after Wednesday, we crossed back above the red line after Thursday. So now the green line is on top. We are in a weakening trend with the ADX below its moving average. But now we would default over to the positive side. And we see that same thing with the green line going back above the red line with our short-term ADX chart. We're picking up a bit here with volume and we're just about getting back to average when we look at this oscillator. Sentiment, we're kind of going sideways now with the ulcer index. So this is not really giving us all that much insight. We tick down with the VIX with the line chart as well as the bar chart, which is very common on an up day. And after seeing a couple of days of the v the VIX of the VIX really shoot up, it's now starting to come back down as we saw some follow through with prices going higher. The VIX to move ratio, which really spiked up after Wednesday, now is starting to come back down after Thursday. And the VIX to the three month average of the VIX, it's declining overall, but it's still starting to tick back up. Now, if we see more follow through to the upside, this could very well turn and go down. It takes a while for this to turn. This is one of our longer indicators. And the VIX to VVIX ratio is flattening out after it had been declining. If we see more positive price action, this should resume going down. If things turn more negative, we'll probably see this go up. And here's our five period equity put call ratio where we were extreme positive and now we're starting to drop. Have we reached enough of an extreme positive reading and drop to be more positive for the market right now? Look at other times when we spiked and then started to come down. That was often quite positive for the S&P. Is that where we're at right now? Because we chopped above and below this earlier a few months ago. And this was giving us signals that, okay, maybe something's going to happen. And then it really didn't happen. We ended up seeing things move in the opposite direction. And then here's a longer term look at the five period equity put call ratio where we spiked up and now we're starting to come back down. You can also look at this in the longer term to see how things reacted based on price after we saw these readings. Here's our 253 equity put call ratio where it's ticking back up slightly, but in the longer term, it continues to decline. If we see prices continue to go up, we would see this resume going down. If things turn back more negative, we're going to see this continue to go back up. We did get the latest reading of the American Association of Individual Investors after being extreme positive, but not really, really extreme. They are coming back down and they're pretty much in neutral territory. We look at the red line here, which is the moving average, and that shows a continuation of improvement. Our advanced decline line studies, we turned back up based on price as well as a little bit of a tick up based on volume. As I've been trying to point out here, when we were going down, we're seeing volume going down faster than we are with price. When we turned up, we turned up a little bit more based on price than we did with volume. A little bit of a concern there. We're still at the top with our high new highs, new lows study with the five period, even though we're coming down a little bit. We're declining with our 10 period, but we're starting to flatten out here as we're still seeing much, many more new highs being generated than new lows. But you can see the last couple of days, we have seen a little bit of a pickup in the new lows. 
We're still below the midpoint with our short-term advanced decline ratio, but we're still above the midpoint with our longer-term advanced decline ratio. And this is rather encouraging. This tries to measure the smart money. We're still above an advancing moving average. Even when we had the down day on Wednesday, this continued to go up. So that is positive. And we're finally starting to see some improvement with this other smart money indicator. The check in money flow is starting to turn back up and show some improvement. It's still positive, but we had been declining overall. If we can get above the moving average, the red line, we would eventually see that turn back up as well. Looking at the cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE, where we had fallen a lot more, we're showing a bit of an improvement here, but we're still declining. Our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE just ticked back up slightly. The mega caps outperformed the broad market. And so that's where we're not seeing real big changes here. And a little bit of an improvement based on price, but not really an improvement based on volume when we look at common stock on the NYSE. Another little warning sign. The other advanced decline line that we look at tick back up just a little bit, but you see just a little bit of a move back up. So when we look at all of our advanced decline line studies, we're turning back up after almost getting down to the moving average. The S&P has been holding up better and it's still well above its moving average. Turning back up with the mid caps, we did turn up with the small caps, but we're still below the moving average. Looking at our daily chart where we're kind of coming back above this pivot point, right now so so far it looks like a big m here you want to go to mcdonald's or something get some fries okay well we're coming back up more to the higher end of this range but we've been bouncing around quite a bit are we going to be able to break out and set a new all-time high we're going to bounce around inside here or eventually are we going to see some more weakness on the bottom we see where volume was above average no changes here so you can just pause and look at this Here's the Williams percent R, which is one of our shorter term oscillators, just starting to become extreme positive. We tick back up with our 20, 50, and we're pretty much flat with our 200 period moving average study. And this is what I've really been focused on lately, are the 20 period moving averages. After Wednesday, we had the down day, but we were able to stay above it, the, e the exponential moving average. We were able to regain the simple moving average in Thursday's session. So, so far, this support is holding. The force index, which had slipped below the midpoint here and turned negative, actually went back up and has turned back to positive. In the short term, we're just barely extreme positive with our short, short-term stochastics. Remember, this chart is a further subdivision of the short-term time frame. We're still declining after being extreme in the intermediate short term. We're still extreme positive in the long short term. And we're coming back right on the border between the plus one and plus two standard deviation. When we get really nervous about this is when we go up quickly and we get up into the plus three standard deviation channel, we're not there yet. So we're doing okay as far as this chart is concerned. And we're coming back up into these moving averages when we look at our double and triple exponential moving average study based on 20 periods. Intermediate term, we're still above the midpoint with the balance of power. So that's positive. It declined just a little bit. And we're still positive but neutral with the go no go system when it's the dark blue bars that's positive when they turn to a lighter shade of blue that's when it's more neutral we got back above the midpoint with our highest high value so that's positive the ttm squeeze is continuing to trend a little bit lower here we haven't turned negative yet it would be nice if this could turn and actually start to go up but it has not done that yet the 50 period double and triple exponential moving average study, we're coming right back up into the double exponential moving average. That's the blue line. It would be more positive if we could get back above the red line. With the red line above the blue line, that means we're going up faster. So the trend is still intact in the intermediate term, at least for right now. After slipping slightly below zero with the ease of movement, we did tick back above the midpoint. This tries to measure the path of least resistance, whether it's up or down, and it's getting back a little bit more to the positive side now. The Arun indicator is declining just a little bit after giving us an extreme positive reading. We're The green line here are buyers, and they're dropping off just a little bit where the sellers are flattening out, but they're pegged at the bottom, and that's why we're seeing the oscillator decline just a little bit. When it's above this zero line, the oscillator is positive. So we are still positive with this chart. And here's what where we bounced up with the McClellan oscillator for the S&P. We really come down below this extreme negative reading. 
we bounced back up, but we haven't broke above that level yet. So when the summation index is negative, that means we're going down based on price. It's also declining based on volume. We're still kind of an extreme reading here where we're still showing also that the volume has been going down a lot quicker than price, at least recently. And we did see a little bit of a bounce with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. It has not come back up. It, it never got extreme negative. So even though it's bouncing, that doesn't really show what we're seeing in the previous chart. But we are declining with the summation index based on price and volume when we look at the NYSE. And I get distracted sometimes because I have a naughty little cat here who's just dying for some attention. And that kind of takes me away sometimes. But he would make even more noise if I didn't let him in here. Okay, editorial note there. The Swenlin trading oscillator based on price and volume, this is still negative. We're dropping based on price and volume below zero. The fact that we had an up day and this didn't turn up, that's a bit of a warning sign. We're still extreme positive with the PMO, but we're below the moving average. We're declining based on price and volume, and notice how volume is going down faster. We're just coming off of an extreme negative reading with the percent of PMOs in the S&P that are rising. We're extreme negative with the buy signals. We're extreme positive with the percent of PMOs that are above zero. And we've switched from being negative for the S&P back to positive with the Elder's Impulse system. We're still positive with the parabolic SAR. And we're trying to turn up, but we haven't crossed above the moving average with the slope oscillator. We're still looking more negative with the MACD. We're going to need to see more follow through for this to turn back up. So with all of our oscillators showing a little bit of an improvement with the slope, still declining with the TSI, <clears throat> the MACD is also declining, as is the PMO and PPO. Longer term, we're also declining with the TRIX and the KST. So on a momentum basis, we're just chopping around like we're on a treadmill. We haven't really gone anywhere. It's going to take some real movement for these to show some improvement along the way. And here is another look at the 20 period moving averages. Regaining that is kind of the first step in being able to turn back and look more positive. If that can, if we can hang on to that. We're no longer extreme with the bullish percent index with the S&P. We've now dropped down below 70. Now it's positive because it's above 50, but this is also a sell signal when we drop below 70. So you can take it in the positive way or in the negative way. We're declining with the bullish percent index for the NYSE, but we're still above 50. We're still above 70 with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index, and it turned back up, and we're extreme positive there. We're also seeing some improvement here with the Chaikin oscillator. We're above zero and advancing, so that's positive, where we tick back up with the money flow index, but we're still below 50, so that's negative. The ultimate oscillator turning down, but still above 50. The vortex is not cross positive yet. The red line is on top, even though it did decline. The green line is on bottom, even though it did advance. For this to turn back more positive, we need to see the green line cross back above the red line. And we're turning back up with our 14 and 9 period RSI. We're above 50 with both, so that is positive. We're still above an advancing moving average with on balance volume. We tick back up with our 200, and we're kind of flattening out a little bit here with our 50 period moving average study with those stocks in the S&P. The Copic curve is trying to turn up here, but it's still negative. The percent B indicator has now turned back more positive. The equal weight did tick up, but it's still been underperforming the S&P. Looking at our Fibonacci lines here, I just have the open high, low, close study here, the mini rainbow where we're coming back out of the top of this rainbow. With the hike in Ashi, we're turning back and looking more positive. We're also back to looking more positive with the Kegi. The Ranko chart is now redrawn and is looking positive, and the three-line break is also looking positive. With our longer term, we are coming down with the 150 and 200, but we're still looking rather extreme. And I showed this yesterday. Just want to show how we saw some improvement here. When we look at the S&P 500 and take a ratio with the bonds, where we're going up here, and that means that the that the market is favoring a soft landing, that we're coming through some economic weakness without going into a recession. And we're still above this longer term trend line. As long as we continue to go up, we will be above that trend line. And we did see a change here. This is a Horchak method. This is a long term signal. 
where we when we were seeing some weakness, we dropped all the way down to minus six. And then as we bounced up from October, we got back up to zero. Now we're back up to 10. This is a full on buy signal. So that is long term positive for the S&P. Actually, it's for the NYSE. We did see a move up with our ratio when we look at the S&P versus the equal weight S&P. That just means the mega caps continue to outperform. We're still really near an all-time high with the Dow. We turned up with the transports, but we are showing a real negative divergence. We declined with the utilities, which gave some support to the S&P. The transports are still underperforming the Dow. The Dow is still maintaining support above this pivot point and ended up being up over half a percent in Thursday's session. So it's still hanging in there. The diamonds have switched back over to positive where they had been negative. The NASDAQ is still looking better here, but we haven't broken out above this previous shorter term high, but this is looking better than it was. And the NASDAQ 100 did set a new all-time high where it broke out above this previous high and above the previous all-time high. And we switched back over to positive for the Elder's Impulse System for the QQQs. We're still negative though with momentum. The PPO is showing some improvement and it's trying to turn up, but it's still below the moving average. And I just wanted to show, this is a Fibonacci chart of the NASDAQ 100, how we have been breaking into new all-time highs here. The small caps did bounce back up a little bit, but there's an awful lot of damage that needs to be repaired. We switched from being negative back over to neutral for the small caps with the Elder's Impulse system. We never got down to this support level with the small caps when we look at the Russell 2000 index, but we did bounce up a little bit here. We're still working off of a longer term uptrend. The RSI turned back up, but it's below 50. Momentum continues to be negative. The mid caps coming right back up to this pivot point here. This may be acting as overhead resistance. And we switch from being negative back over to neutral for the mid caps when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. And we're coming back close to an all-time high here with the FANG index. The financials, they were up just a little bit. They had been up really strong. Then earnings started to come out. We saw a little bit of a pullback. We're wondering, are they going to resume their uptrend or continue to go sideways or start to fall from here? The dollar is rebounding. It's up into the 103 area now. And keeping an eye on interest rates, we were up with the 10-year yield. We were down with the 10-year based on price. And then looking at our growth to value studies here, where we're showing some improvement with the Qs to S&P, but discretionary to the S&P is underperforming. That is a warning sign. We are seeing where large cap growth is outperforming large cap value. So when we look at our different growth to value ratios, the large caps, mid caps, and small caps are all showing improvements now. It's discretionary that's giving us some concern. We're still giving a very high reading, an extreme positive reading with our 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. We are negative with our highs minus the lows, taking a five-period moving average and looking at the broad market where we had been showing some more improvement. This will continue to fall unless the broad market continues to improve or does show some improvement. And we're turning back up just slightly with our S&P 500 new highs minus the new lows based on 50 periods. And then this is the moving average of the indicator. The fact that we're above zero is positive. And we're going up with the S&P to utilities ratio. That often matches what the S&P is doing. And I wanted to show this. This is our 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio. We're dropping below the midpoint based on price as well as volume. So that's negative. Also notice how volume is going down fast, faster than it is on price. And that's a warning sign to us. We are dropping with the two-year yield, which is giving some support to the S&P. Even though the 10-year was up, the two-year yield ended up declining in Thursday's session. And that, that helped, at least in the short term. So what's our outlook for Friday? We're wondering, okay, what's going on with this January effect? We saw a little bit of a blip with the small caps. Is it going to come back? We're seeing some strength in the mid caps, which often participates in the January effect. But it's been a real disappointment, at least to this point. We won't get the final score for our trifecta until the end of January. The technicals are showing some improvement here. And we did regain the 20 period simple moving average. We're going to get existing home sales and consumer sentiment in Friday's session. 
We're watching the geopolitical events. We're seeing if any of those have any kind of an impact. And here's the calendar, and I'll have the new calendar when I do the video for Monday's session. Seasonally, not all that great when you look at the Dow. We're neutral to negative. We're neutral to positive when we look at the S&P. We're flat out negative with the NASDAQ. So we kind of run the whole gambit. Also keep in mind that Friday will be options expiration. So that can make it kind of a crazy day. When we do have options expiration week, we tend to be down more than we are up. And this is an updated chart from Carson. This is the Carson cycle composite for the S&P. And this is what we've been doing so far, the green line here. And this is what normally happens. And it suggests potential weakness into March. Well, it's kind of been living up to that so far. We will be on the 13th trading day of the month where we do see some weakness during an election year for the S&P. We're wondering where are we when it comes to this January effect? This is also confirming what we've been going through, this choppiness. Now, we do see some kind of a real drop here. We've been chopping around. Now, are we going to see some more weakness before we see some more strength? Here's the Stock Traders Almanac, where we are pretty much flat. But at some point, this does go down here. So that might suggest some weakness before we get more into some strength. And then when the sitting president is running for re-election, re at least that may happen, it may not happen. We tend to see more positive seasonality than what we've been seeing so far. We will be on Friday's session where it tends to be the second most positive day of the week. So our scenarios, can't really go with the down one right now. And I, I didn't highlight the up scenario yet because we wanna see some follow through. We are looking better. We did regain the 20 period moving average. So yes, we're positive, but we're, going sideways in a tr in a range right now and we want to see some kind of a breakout with that we're not going with the sideways trend for right now because our adx charts are both still above 20 but they are in weakening trends they just got done going from positive to negative back to positive and then the warning signs i didn't show the risk on posture it's just chopping around more or less sideways the vortex continues to be negative although it did improve in the bigger picture and in the longer term, the transports are negatively diverging from the Dow. The one to three month short term bond spread continues to be positive where it should be negative. The copy curve is still negative. Our oscillators are below their moving averages and some are still giving us extreme positive readings. The NASDAQ 100 PPO that we use to study momentum, it's still negative. It's showing some improvement, but has not crossed above the moving average. When we look at the positive signs, growth is still showing some improvement and we're seeing this more longer term on a day in and day out basis. We're hoping that that will continue if we wanna turn back more positive on the market. The daily special K chart is still positive. Our five period equity put call ratio is now starting to go back down after giving an extreme reading. That could be positive for the market. Our longer term equity put call ratio. It's ticking up just a little bit, but in the bigger picture, it's still declining. The parabolic SAR chart continues to be positive. The bullish percent index is positive. It's weakening because it's coming down where the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index is still extreme positive. The Zohorchak method just generated a new signal. That's positive. And we're still dealing with longer term uptrends with the Russell, the small caps, and the mid caps. Small and mid-cap growth, I showed those charts. We continue to be positive, but we're more or less chopping sideways. The financial sector is still positive in the bigger picture. And then our new high, new low studies for the S&P continues to be positive, but we have been ticking down in the short term. Our conclusion, we're positive. We're showing some improvement. We're leaning more towards the improvement side right now after regaining the 20 period simple moving average. And that's what we're focused on in the short term. In the intermediate term, we still have some overbought and oversold indications at the same time. So that just shows that we're more or less range bound. When we look at the long term, we are positive since we're above the 200 period simple moving average, but we still have those longer term moving averages that are extreme positive. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a very good day and I will talk to you in the next video.